Welcome to the Dillweed Society Film Podcast. I'm Max Scribner, and my favorite movie is the 1973 adaptation of Jesus Christ Superstar. My name is Isabella, and my favorite movie is the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. My name is Jose Ortiz, and my favorite movie is uh, Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. Welcome to the podcast, Welcome Jose. To the podcast. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. So today we want to talk about the new Doctor Strange movie. Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse mm-hmm. of Madness. The newest in a in a very long line of Marvel movies. It's getting out of hand. It is getting out of hand, and I, I did not see the requisite material for this movie coming into it. True. I think we're at three different levels of understanding the context for this movie, right? Because, Bella, you said that you didn't see WandaVision. I saw WandaVision, but I really don't... I'm not up to date on, like, a lot of Marvel stuff. Mm. Yeah. You big, do you watch everything? Yeah, I think I was pretty much up to date, um, up to watching the movie. So, you know, I saw everything that preceded it. The WandaVision, uh, Doctor Strange, of course, and the What If show. What did you think of the movie, given that? Right. I mean, simply, I think it just, having that knowledge, I think just, you kind of already have assumptions mm-hmm. to it, right? And certain expectations. And just simply when you watch the movie you kind of know stuff already like oh that comes from like i I already kind of know what's going to happen or slightly i know who this character is or i know what they're going to try here and here but i mean i would say it's probably not detrimental not knowing some of those things like i think you could still enjoy the movie yeah yeah you know for for entertainment purposes purposes but we sort of did we i mean we went in not knowing a lot of the stuff yeah basically and still came out of it i we didn't even realize that we missed some stuff oh. in this movie i think because we were t- we were talking i was talking to you earlier and you said that the the what if content had some implications in this movie yeah that i probably just didn't didn't even notice were yes. there yeah correct I wonder what it would be like to come into this movie with no, never seen a Marvel movie <laughs> at all. Nothing? Oof. It would, it would probably be pretty tough. I think it'd be madness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, hence the pun. I think it would definitely be, uh, it'd be hard to, to watch some of the stuff. You'd be a little bit confused. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can we do a quick plot overview uh, of the movie just so that we're all on the same page for what, what happened in it? And mm-hmm. Do you what have things? one? Yeah, Uh, I can pull up the the letterbox synopsis. Doctor Strange, with the help of his mystical allies, both old and new, traverses the mind-bending and dangerous alternate realities of the multiverse to confront a mysterious new adversary. Which is very vague. Um, And also leaves out, I think, the most important thing in this movie, which is that, like, there's a whole new important character added. Yeah, the girl. The girl, whose name is... America? America. America Chavez. Wait, it said... Mysterious new adversary. Like a uh, w- Wanda. I think it is Wanda. Is Wanda? I don't know Wanda if I would say that mysterious though. Right. I mean, right? Even if you haven't seen WandaVision, her powers in this are very poorly defined. Like all of yeah. the magic in this. It's I, like what can she do? Yeah. Yeah. So she like breaks through all of the defenses for the the wizards at the beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. right? Like every single. Doctor Strange wizard is trying to defend right. and she like single-handedly takes all of them out mm-hmm. in the um in the beginning beginning in the, in the beginning of the movie like the first 20 minutes of the movie oh right well right. I think they start with just one right that one from that first scene of the that one universe when they're trying to get the um the book of whatever yeah. I the, book of the, the book, book of something the book of something <laughs> <laughs> so the opposite opposite to the um the one that the good book and the bad book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the good there book and the bad book. Yeah. There you go. There's the bad book. Yes. And Which Wanda's you... using. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. It was not very yeah. memorable. Yeah. To be honest. I don't know. Like, the entire yeah. movie, it, like, for me, watching it, having kind of seen WandaVision, but, like, not really paying attention to it, it for me, it felt like they kept switching between, like, genres of, like, mm-hmm. it was, like, a coming of age story with America's character, and then it was, like, a family drama with like Wanda, mm-hmm. and then it was an action movie, and then comedy because Marvel always have to, has to have comedy now because of the Joss Whedonification. Yeah. The what? The Joss Whedonification. Oh of yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like you've got to have like a weird self-referential he, joke in the middle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Sam Raimi too is, you know, him bringing the uh, 
you know, his classic horror mm-hmm. aspect to it, but I think also the campiness. True, like, it because. was more, like, gruesome than a lot of other Marvel movies. Yeah, definitely. It probably it's had the dark. most, like, prosthetic or, like, actual um, costuming it, of any recent Marvel movie since, like, Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Yeah. 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 I mean, it ends... Spoilers. Um, with, like, he's in a, his dead body, right? And he's, like... It's kind of like Evil Dead. Yeah, half of his face is ripped off. Half of his face is ripped off, and he has to, like, fight her in as a zombie, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a zombie movie, too. <laughs> right. And that was the first strange that we saw in the first scene. Mm-hmm. Right. He died. And then right, 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 yeah. The others are our strange, I guess you could yeah. say, from Earth 666. 616? 616? Yeah. Not 666. That's <laughs> 666. To the devil of the universe. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I, I totally agree with what Bella was saying about it's, it jumps through so many genres in the span of, what, two hours, something. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of a lot. Yeah, so I think, unfortunately, watching those things that preceded the movie definitely enhances you know, going back to the question, like, you know, if you've seen everything and you're up to date, mm. how does it affect your experience watching the movie? And I think it definitely enhances it. Because mm. now that you guys are saying what you're saying, you know, if I think about it, if I try to forget what happened in the other things, like the show or the mm-hmm. the two, I guess the two shows and the, and the couple movies, not knowing some of those things, some of the stuff in the movie kind of falls short. Yeah, just because it has no substance and it's a little all over the place, right? So you can't follow, and I don't know, it's not as uh, I don't know, like interesting. Yeah, a good example of that 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 I think is even understandable to us is like the cameos in the middle of the movie. Yeah, mm. you know yeah. where mm-hmm. they have um, Patrick Stewart, who like I mean, how can you not love Patrick Stewart? Yo, part of the yeah. Part of that has got to be that, like, you've seen him in in the right. other Marvel movies. Yeah. Right. You know, it would not make any sense. Like, his character is wouldn't make any sense and would totally throw you off if you had not seen that. Yeah. Or even, like, knowing who Correct. Mr. Fantastic is. That's true, yeah. And seeing John Krasinski, John Krasinski. <laughs> play him. It was, like, it was, like, enough. It was novel enough to entertain you for uh, and keep Five you minutes, along. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Before they kill him off. Spoiler alert. Right. But if you didn't know... Or being part of the fan theory. Because, like, also that's another right. thing. Almost equivalent to watching the shows or, you know, the movies mm-hmm. before it. Like, fan theory also, um, you know, gives you the expectation or heightens your interest mm-hmm. to watching the movie. And so that whole thing of, oh, wow, John Krasinski's, you know, and then he's going to be playing Mr. Fantastic. Oh, that means they're going to involve the Fantastic Four at some point. And mm-hmm. That all starts to snowball, uh, you know, some kind of interest in your head. Yeah. I, I like the idea of, like, incorporating all the other, like, Marvel people that have not interacted with the Avengers, and I think Doctor mm-hmm. Strange would be, like, the character to do that because he, like, does the multiverse thing. Right. Um, but I feel like they just half-assed it because it was just, like, that one section in the movie. Yeah. I thought, like, going in, I thought that there would be a, a bunch of characters from, like, all these different franchises, mm-hmm. and then it was just this one scene, and I was kind of let right. down. Yeah. Like, stretch it out from the beginning with mm-hmm. all those characters, rather than just a yeah. quarter of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That was the most exciting part in the movie. Yeah. And it, it only lasted for a little bit. Mm, so what does that say? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But I, also, they bring back, um... See, it's a romance film too because they bring back his love interest. What's her name? I don't remember. Rachel. Rachel something. Who? Wait, the actor. Or the oh, actor's Rachel name McAdams. Is oh, Rachel, Rachel McAdams. McAdams. I thought you were talking about the character. No, no, no. I don't know her character's name, but they bring her back from like the first Doctor Strange movie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was like, yeah. I forgot that she was in that. So, but she's in a big. She's a big part of this movie. So I don't know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Reading the romance in this, in comparison to. Um, the other multiverse movie that came out this year, mm-hmm. Everything Everywhere All at Once, mm. um, it like it falls so flat and is so like last minute idea to to like give him something that he wants in the movie. Yeah, um, right. 
uh, it doesn't. It, it does feel like like what does he actually want in this movie? Uh, I don't know if it really comes together right. for me at least. Right. Between not wanting to die, not wanting what's her name, Scarlet Witch, to destroy the timeline, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wanting to save America, and then also <laughs> wanting to be with Christine. With Christine. Christine. That's, that's her name. name. Yeah. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Um, it just it like all he gets to say is like I love you in every universe. Mm. Which, to me at least, was not that was not that impactful. I mean, yeah, I, I see where you're coming with it. I mean, but I th- I think the you know to just kind of bring some, I guess, some enlightenment in that idea is there is some positivity. Is I think what was different as well from other movies because you know it's usually that cheesy romance like it's always it's either you lost it. Or you have it, and then they died, or something like that. I think they were trying to go somewhere in between with it. You know, and yeah, they felt short and some things. But what I did enjoy the fact that they brought her along almost throughout the whole movie. And it was a little refreshing to bring about that whole concept of, you know... Like, he didn't, he couldn't get what he wanted. We all know that. Okay, yeah, he couldn't get what he wanted um, because whatever, his powers or, you know, the responsibility and he doesn't want her to get involved, kind of like Spider-Man, right? Right. Similar to Spider-Man. But um, to give her power to, like, the character and the actress as well, to give her power to kind of have that conversation with him Mm -hmm. and also say, well, yeah, it's because of this. Or, you know, it's, it's because, it's because you're not, you know, like, I do know you love me, but you can't, you can't go there. You just won't allow yourself to go there because you have other stuff, you know, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, and usually sometimes we kind of delve in the character too much about how detrimental it is for the character you know, to lose that love interest. Mm. So I like, I like that they evened it out towards the end and they just kind of resolved it to be like, okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, that's nice. You don't have to do this constant battle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's like the opposite of Scarlet Witch where he can like accept. Right. Like it's over. Exactly. Yeah. It's a relief. Yeah. Because you don't have to, there's, there's already too much stuff. So you don't have to think about it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of the like, the plot structure of this movie. Did you ever watch Doctor Who, Jose? No, I really, really good. This, Bella and I watched Doctor Who. This felt like a two-part Doctor Who episode mm. to me. Okay. You know, it was very like it was more than a single episode of TV. Yeah. But it did feel like, um, like they had a set of characters that they liked, yeah. and they were just like, you can do anything you want. They come up with come up with like yeah. something that can keep people in their seats for two hours. Right. Um, it did feel very like I don't even know because it was like epic in scope, but not deep in how well thought out it was. Right. Yeah. You know? Complexities in the characters, or yeah, yeah, or the stretching of it. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that that was funny. We we watched the CW superhero movies. Or superhero TV shows, Which like ones? Green Arrow. Oh, Flash. oh yeah, Flash. Smallville. Smallville. We That's like true. the OG. That was too early for yeah. us, but we saw oh, okay. Green Arrow and Flash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are like those felt kind of like this one, yeah. but mm-hmm. way lower budget. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. uh, similarly, like they want to do something really big, uh, yep. but they have to keep everything the same by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Right. By the end of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of like rushing to to introduce the characters in time so that you can hit the runtime. Oh, totally. Yeah, and you know I'm ha- I'm happy that they can do this, that they right. can do something that's like big budget, uh, but also doesn't have to be that serious. But it did not feel like a full full on movie for some reason, for me at least. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, because people are equating Marvel movies nowadays to like TV shows because you have to watch like so many a million other things before you can watch this one movie I don't know for me I'm like it doesn't they don't need to 
do that much. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, and I think their their fan base and their and not just their fan base, but their audience who does jump into it maybe later on. Mm-hmm. You know, they all have different expectations and um, different interests. Right. But I feel like if you're going into a movie like this, that you know, it does feel like a show, or it does mm-hmm. feel like you. I don't know. You expect to, even if you don't know the characters, but you expect for the characters to grow throughout the movie just mm-hmm. based on your first interaction with them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's like Bella said, you don't have to do that much. And like I was telling you the other day, the unfortunate truth about Doctor Strange 2 is that because of where the phase is, you know, in Marvel and because they have all these future ideas with it with all the movies and now shows and it falls within a number right and so it's not it's not more a continuation of this next story right because throughout the first you know since iron man i don't know maybe all the way obviously all the way up until endgame you know it was all basically a continuation right and yeah you Maybe you did have to watch one here and there to kind of fall in the storyline, but not really. Like, you could have mm-hmm. still watched all the movies, maybe one of them, or, you know, yeah. maybe one Avenger or something, and you could have still had the impact and the point of the, the conclusion. Right. But now it's surpassed that to the point where it's just so much. And then at the same time, if they're trying to do so much in one mm-hmm. movie and it seems like a show and it makes you feel that way i don't know it's it's a lot and all you get is just the entertainment aspect of it yeah i don't know like we watched it for two hours and i like i didn't want to get up and leave no no it it kept me it kept me for the time being Mm mm-hmm right yeah it in in phase one it wasn't guaranteed that they would get a sequel for like iron man one right Mm -hmm. so they had to make the movie they had to make the movie such that it was good on its own. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. now they understand that it's part of this broader landscape. Right. Yeah. Yeah, universe. Yeah. yeah. Multiverse. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think that that does, that does bring up some problems. I thought the multiverse... Uh, I, said this, I said this after we came out, but like, I thought the multiverse brought up these interesting problems of like power levels for the characters. Mm-hmm. I think that that like lasers should just be like banned from the marvel universe because <laughs> once you once everyone's shooting lasers at each other like what's the point anymore right um, it's like it, dragon ball z type exactly. of thing it's just so much power it's just, and you know the laser's not gonna kill them yeah right. like the laser doesn't kill them we already know that yeah they're back on the third movie right you yeah. you knock them into a wall and you're like oh they're not dead of course they're not dead the only way to kill people in marvel is to is to like stab them right yeah you can you can't get (laughs) or disintegrate them or disintegrate them right Right. because you can't show the blood right yeah there's like they're totally invulnerable to brute force trauma blunt force trauma correct yeah i thought mr fantastic was fun until he until he got god Mm -hmm. because he can like he's like the most creative superpower that th- that exists in the Marvel universe right now. He's stretch. He's stretchy. Exactly. <laughs> He's stretchy. He's stretchy. That's true. He's also the the most expensive to animate though. Oh, I guess so. Lasers yeah. are really cheap. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and the idea too is cheap. Just to like have lasers and everybody laser each other. And... Yeah. Yeah. They're also more family friendly. Less Lasers? graphic. Yeah. Yeah, but then you have like scenes in this movie where it's like gruesome like faces are split up. I don't even remember, True. but it's Imagine. Like... Yeah, imagine what Sam Raimi could have done if he didn't have to like pass the Marvel inspectors. True. Like this the I'm sure the first draft of this movie was so much more violent and like gory than the current right. one. Would you say you would have enjoyed it more? I, I think I it would have so. stuck in my mind more. I like I would have right. thought about it yeah. more afterwards. But maybe that's because we're adult and we w- could watch that stuff. So 
Yeah. Maybe if you I were would a be kid, maybe not. Right. Yeah. Right. So. If I were in high school when I was really into Marvel movies, maybe I wouldn't have liked all the gore. Right. So I think they did a good balance of it, you know, despite the other things. I think. Mhm. Yeah. I think he 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 stretched it as far as he could, probably. What did you think about Sam Raimi's style, like now that he's back doing superhero movies? I mean, I like Sam Raimi's style, hugely in part because I love the Tobey Maguire movies, the Spider-Man movies. I mean, that as you know, I I was brought up with those. I mean, I was since since a little kid, I was a big Spider-Man fan. So when I finally got to see that in live action. I think honestly, those Spider-Man movies, man, were a huge impact on me. You know, from everything from the campiness to the romance, like honestly, and as you know, and as a kid, you're not thinking about like, mm-hmm. you know the romance, but it was it was so honest that it captures your your curiosity as a kid. And you're like, wow, that's that's really sincere in human beings. You know, obviously, you know what that is, and it was really refreshing to see that in that way. And um, you know, some of the Sam Raimi like scare factors here and there with like the Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. You know, the little scare moments when they do. You know, like the typical ones they do in the movies. Yeah. Um. And uh, and, and like we were talking about Max about the uh, the effects. You know this. That was what, t- early two thousands, two thousand two, maybe, yeah, yeah. Probably something that. like that. The first one and the care, the time and care that they put into it with just what they had, yeah, was you've never really seen that, like a human swinging around like that in New York City, mm-hmm. without it being super either green screened or. Um, or just super cheesy, you yeah. know, just physical wise. And it was such a good combination. It made you feel like you were there, like you were kind of swinging along, you know, and yeah. I, I mean, I love his style. I love his style, even even if there's certain factors, you know, like the campiness or whatever, it's a little much or, but I don't know. I don't want to take it too seriously either. You know, it is a superhero movie mm-hmm. and at the same time, when he's back into it, I'm all in, even with the other stuff being a little much, maybe. But, like, I don't think it's supposed to be taken too seriously. Because then it's not... Then it's not part of that world. Right. It's something else. Different genre. Yeah, it's a different genre. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. The, the effects in that old Spider-Man had so much weight. They were really cohesive with the environment and they had so much weight involved like they they really felt like the actors uh were were really interacting with them yeah um, i don't know how That's much of it, way was, to put it was like actual or physical yeah right. like practical effects or or vfx right like um, rigs <laughs> but like it doesn't yeah. matter if if the vfx look like practical effects uh-huh. if they look like something that really existed yeah or um yeah if they're convincing then that's that's right. enough as long as they fooled you the first time right right mm-hmm. yeah it's good enough does it make you wonder like how much how much of the spider-man movies were sam raimi and how much of it was everyone else the like time. the writers and the or even like the year that it came out because for me my spider-man is andrew garfield but that's because mm. when i became close with spider-man was the year, like i'm just like younger Right. So that was, like, my big Spider-Man. But, like, for me, like, that director is not, does not stick out in my mind. I don't even know who directed those, those Spider-Man movies. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, Sam Raimi, I think his style with, like, the time that it came out, with, like, the superhero aspects, like, really worked for his Spider-Man. So I don't know what that means. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So did you, so when you saw the Andrew Garfield compared to then when you decided to see the... I'm assuming you saw, you saw the Tony Maguire ones, right? I've seen most of them. Okay. So when you did that transition, what what? how did it stand out to you? The, uh, like, the Amazing Spider-Man compared to the Sam Raimi ones? I think... 
Mm, I don't know. It's, it's just, I think t- in my head, the Tobey Maguire ones are like a lot more colorful and like playful. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Andrew Garfield was just like, that was like the teen heartthrob, like Spider Man. <laughs> right. But I also thought that Tobey Maguire was like not cool enough to be Spider Man because in my head, Spider Man's like, not that this is a Spider Man podcast, but he's my favorite superhero. Spider Man's like, dorky Mm -hmm. but he's also really smart like and he's like cool yeah and he has quippy like little moments which i think andrew garfield did really well um but toby mcguire i don't know he wasn't like cool enough for me so maybe he's he maybe he's stuck more to the peter parker closer to the peter parker than yeah uh andrew garfield did i think so yeah which i heard a lot too was how they differentiate all three Mm -hmm. was like uh, Toby was like the best Peter. Peter, yeah. Andrew was the best Spider Man. Yep. And then Tom was like in between both. Yeah. Like an even kill. He's good at both of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think he's pretty good. It's interesting. Tom Holland. He is like really yeah. popular. Yeah. Yeah, that's who. In his, in his own school, which is like not a Peter Parker thing, but it's fine. It seems like a different timeline. Yeah. With him. For yeah. sure, for sure. Because of the MCU, though. So. Yeah. That was also a multiverse movie, when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all multiverse, all the way down. I mean, did you like any of the other Sam Raimi stuff? Like, his other work? I don't. Evil I don't Dad like or... Evil Dead, but... I don't like horror. I have not seen oh, other okay. movies. Do you? Yeah, I like the Evil Dead, just because it's like, uh... It, it's just an OG movie, you know? Would you give it a rating, this movie? Out of five. Out of five? <sighs> Um, Doctor Strange? Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. From, I guess, first watching it, I would say a three. Yeah. But maybe if I see it again, maybe I would add another half in there. Mm -hmm. And just solely off of the fact that there is so much in it. And I know that I'm the type of person that likes to look into all the little details that they add in there for, like, a flash moment. Yeah, right. You know, all the little multiverses that they went through mm-hmm. like oh that's that world they're like are they gonna go into it? so you know i think that's more exciting those little treats when you yeah. watch it a couple more times yeah true um but that shouldn't matter so yeah i would say a three what would you guys i also gave it a three um one thing i forgot to mention was i really liked the soundtrack mm. yeah i thought the soundtrack was pretty fun there was that like mm-hmm. there was that um it was it was kind of all over the place. It was very orchestral, and then it also had like That's electric true. guitar in the middle. It was weird. Like ding, they had a ding, bunch ding. of different things. Yeah, when they were like fighting with the instruments yeah. for no reason. I thought it was cool. That though. was hilarious. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a musician. You kind of get a kick out of that. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh look at what they're doing. They're doing a hit on the scale there, and it's just like yes. With the piano, throwing the yeah. keys around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. I thought that was really good. Yeah, I thought the soundtrack was like probably the thing that I liked. The soundtrack and the um, the costuming just for the zombie were like the two things I, I liked the most in it. But yeah, I gave it a three, which is, I think, probably what I give most of, most superhero movies, except for that new Spider-Man movie, which I gave a three and a half or a four, maybe. Mm. Yeah. I think... I can't remember if I gave it a three or a three and a half in my review. It was a good movie. Yeah, I wouldn't. Anyway. I wouldn't tell people not to go watch it. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's like, not bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do di- you do dissect the things you would have right wanted to be stretched out. Maybe I think mostly would we all agree character wise, mm-hmm. maybe because yeah. there's so many. Yeah. If it was more focused, yeah, and had more had a a clearer through line, emotional through line. I think mm-hmm. I would have liked that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was... It was fun. It was, was cool. Yeah. Was it long? Two hours uh, and a half? Two... Was it two and a half hours? No, no, no. no. Minutes. So, yeah, oh, just two more hours, than two, two hours. hours. It, did, it felt very short. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. All right, do we want to get into our uh, recommendations? I think that was a great idea. So my recommendation this week is not exactly a movie, but it's not exactly a stand-up either. It's uh, Roth Annual. Roth Annual is uh, Jared Carmichael's newest stand-up. It's not exactly a stand-up. It's it's really more of a conversation between him and the audience, which I think is 
unlike any other stand-up I've ever seen. And it's really heartfelt. Um, you'll probably cry, but is it on HBO right now? Yes, I believe so. It's on HBO. Yeah, I really recommend watching it because it's very sweet. Um, I recommend Hustle, starring Queen Latifah and Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. I love any time Adam Sandler does um, like a drama mm -hmm. or just anything weighed in more than the, uh, the comedy. Because I, th I think he does have a lot to, to give, too, mm -hmm. other than the comedy. It's really uh, refreshing, even if it's something, you know, similar or stereotypical. Because, I mean, this one does have a lot of... It's a sports movie, and, you know, it's a family movie, and it's mm -hmm. about overcoming and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think it cuts through. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a nice family movie. It's a nice, also, kind of drama with a bit of comedy in there. It's, it's well made. I'm recommending Line Goes Up, The Problem with NFTs. Uh, it is the latest video essay by Dan Olson, I, uh, also known as Folding Ideas. It goes through a history that I remember, uh, I remember very clearly because I was in the tech world when cryptocurrency and NFTs started to get big. So it was really interesting uh, to, see, to see that summed up in such a clear way uh, and conveyed to a general audience. It is probably the most accurate description of how cryptocurrency works and why it came to be that I've ever seen. And it also explains what NFTs are, why they became so popular, and why it's all kind of a scam. So yeah, uh, I... That's on YouTube, right? It's on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. And Hustle's on Netflix. And Hustle's on Netflix. Yes. At Folding Ideas is the YouTube channel. All right. Well, Thanks thank for listening. You. Thank yeah. you guys for having me. It was fun. Thanks for coming Thanks on. Thanks for coming on. It was a lot of fun.